podcast hosting provided by Transistor. If you want to host your own show, head over to Transistor.fm and start a 14-day free trial. Hello and welcome to the Region Racing Podcast. I'm your host Dino, here once again with Nath. How's it going? I'm very well. I'm very well, thank you Nath. It's good to, good to be back. Yeah. Now, we've got some, got some sombre news this episode, and hopefully um, we can get through it, but there is uh, some other interesting news as well. So, before we look at that, we've got Media of the Week. Yes, so um, what have you been up to media-wise these last couple of weeks, Dean? So I was away for work, and I thought, well, Netflix must have something on, because, I mean, the catalogue's huge, so yeah, I had a look at this new page, and Disenchantment, which is from the creators uh, of The Simpsons and Futurama, Matt Groening, it is funny, it's great. What's, uh, what's it about? I haven't heard of it. So it's about a princess who is an alcoholic and (laughs) uh, is in a kingdom that her father is the king and he is not fit to be king. Basically, he is, he's just the worst Um, and he is trying to really not wreck the kingdom. I don't think he knows how to do a good job, but she always causes trouble for him. Yep. And... She has an elf and a little demon called Lucy. So there's an ulterior motive going on in the background that um, they want the demon to bring her over to their side. It's yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Nice. Is it is it animated in a similar style to The Simpsons and Futurama? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm, a bit newer. Yeah. Yeah, a bit more clean, but it's yeah, it's similar. And as an adult, it's got a lot of it's it's got a lot of jokes that as an adult you really you really just get yeah 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 you know what i mean yeah it's like watching shrek again as an adult yeah yeah it's like how do we watch this as kids like we wouldn't have understood anything yeah that gingerbread man (laughs) yeah oh the gingerbread man what about yourself nath um I, my wife has recently got me started watching McLeod's Daughters. Right. Yep. So, so four episodes in and, uh, and no sign of stopping yet. Um, but no, it is, it's, it's pretty good. Never seen it before. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. Yes. Um, is it the original series? Oh yeah. Yep. The original series from like 15 years ago. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. How does it hold up? Is it? Hold up, okay. Surprisingly well, yeah, yeah. Wow. In terms of, you know, because it's set in the country, everything kind of looks rustic anyway. Yeah, that's so, true. So the, yeah, and so and there's also less around to date it. So yeah, that's good. It, you know, I find cell phones are always a very, uh, very easy way to date a, a film or TV show. Yeah. Um, Do they? But have... there's, there's none of that. So. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> right. Very good. Okay. Um, there was something interesting on Twitter that I thought we should give a go. A spot on the grid for season five has just opened up, and you and your you are the new team owner. Who do you pick? Team driver one, driver two, team principal. Build your dream team. So who have you got? Um. So for the drivers, um, look if you if you could pick anyone, um, I've got three options, and I can't decide between. Between just two of them, um, so Sam Bird, Daniel Apt, and Jean Eric Verne. I think you know get, get any of those two in a team, and you're you're guaranteed to finish strong. What about Mitch Evans? We can't. Yeah, we'll see how we'll see. I suppose it's uh, you know we're going for a, we're going for ultimate results at the end of the day here, and so based on uh, yeah. based on previous results from last season, um, hopefully Mitch Evans can uh, can yeah. show that change that around this season. That, but, uh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Ultimate, ultimate dream fantasy. And team principal. 
Uh, to be honest, I don't know enough team principles um, off the top of my head to be able to pick one. Okay. I'm going to go for James Barkley of Jaguar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go for Bird and Apt. Yep. And I'm going to go for the, I don't know, what team would they? Audi. Yeah. Yep. I reckon that's a pretty good combination. Yeah. It's interesting when you put things into that context, how there definitely is a front runner. Like when you look at all the results, you know, there's there's a few teams in it, but uh but when you start trying to pick out uh pick out one offs or you know, the your your favourites for your dream team, then um there's really some, some very strong strong front runners. Yeah, there is, isn't there? And also the teams have been confirmed for Formula E season five, um, with the regulations, which we will link in the show notes if you're interested. But yeah, would you like to list those off, Nath? Um, so team season five, we have Audi Sport Apt um, coming over from last season, uh, BMW Andretti Motorsport, uh, Dragon and DS to Cheetah, Virgin Racing again, and a new one in um, HWA, um, Mahindra Racing, Neo Formula E, Nissan Edams, and then Panasonic Jaguar and Venturi. Okay, so yeah, we've already known about these teams but it's been confirmed now um mm. how do you think bmwi andretti racing or andretti motorsport will go so are they the the same andretti team we've seen in previous seasons just rebranded and now racing with bmw they're now mm. a B, they're now a bmw manufacturer so yeah yeah yeah, that'll be interesting i um i i honestly can't can't say you know i don't really have any uh any any knowledge of uh, of BMW's Formula E cars so far, so it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, yeah, I I off the my gut feeling is might struggle in the first couple of rounds, um, just coming in perfectly new. But hope maybe with that Andretti experience there, they'll be able to uh, easily uh, easily transition in. So who knows? Interested to uh, interested to see. And HWA with the Venturi powertrain. Do you think that's going to hold them in good stead? Yeah, I think I think similar to similar to what I was just saying about Andretti, you know, they've got some some crossover from Formula E already with that Venturi powertrain and um, working quite closely with Venturi by the sounds of it. So, yeah, it it could it, they might slip right in, um, but there might be those kind of uh, first race hiccups. Yeah, for sure. We also heard that Brian Sellers. Uh, is the second driver confirmed for the IPACE E Trophy, and he is going to partner in Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing, uh, Catherine Legg. So that's sorted their team lineup. Do you know anything about Brian? Um, no, I don't. Fill me in. Yeah, so he's currently leading the WeatherTech Championships GT Daytona class um, alongside teammate Madison Snow. Um, and Leg Catherine Leg is second, and there's only a couple of races remaining when we are recording this. Mm. Interesting. They're getting a lot of GT drivers. Yeah. Yeah. I would have thought they might have a few, I mean, the V8 supercar drivers potentially, or, um, yeah, I'm sure there might be some of them in the frame potentially. Yeah, I suppose it uh, it depends also how things are lining up with with other seasons. Um, what uh, what else is on? What they can kind of slip into in the off season. Yeah, that's a good point as well. This one's interesting. Nath plans for Extreme E as a series featuring all electric SUVs, um, and this was an E Racing three six five exclusive. So, what are the plans for this? Yeah, so this is pretty extreme and uh, and sounds pretty out there. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what eventuates from it. But essentially, it's an all electric kind of SUV championship that visits some of the world's most extreme climates. Um, yeah, off road SUVs racing in uh, Himalayas, Arctic Circle, Amazon rainforest, uh, potentially some remote islands in the Indian Ocean. Um, 
don't know too many more details um, around the exact nature of the racing or what they're going to be doing, whether it's um, around a circuit or more challenges type stuff, um, but could be as early as December 2020. That's pretty close, really, when you think about it. Yeah, when you think, you know, 2018 is coming to, uh, coming to an end, um, so another, what, two, two and a half years? Yeah, and the founder um, and CEO, Alejandro Agag, um, is, is kind of the f- driving force behind the project, along with McLaren Sporting Director Jill DeFerran. So, um, some big names there, and be interesting to see where it yeah. goes. Yeah, and so big names already in the uh, electric car racing world, so um, hopefully that gives it a bigger chance of success with uh, with some of that previous experience coming through. Yeah, I think McLaren's in there due to the fact that they've got the batteries for Formula E. Yeah, so that relationship's probably quite good right now. Yeah. yeah. And now getting into some uh, some sad news. Oh, I was gutted when I saw this, but... So I got this news from race fans. Felix Rosenquist will leave Formula E. Nath, um, I'm pretty gutted. He was a title contender last season at the very start. And I think yeah. if it wasn't for Mahindra's reliability issues, he could have gone all the way. But mm. So we looked at the story in episode 7, and it's turned out to be true. Uh, Felix Rosenquist will leave Formula E as he has signed a deal to race for Chip Ganassi Racing in IndyCar. So he's going to partner the Kiwi, Scott Dixon, next season. So Dixon's already got a a new multi-year contract with Chip Ganassi. So uh, this will be interesting to see how how he goes against the champion. Yeah. Kind of thrown in at the deep end though, so... Yeah, has he raced much um, IndyCar or or um, anything like that in the past? He has already had a brief spell with um, Indy Lights. He did a few, I think he did a few bits of testing, and he was really quick. So that's why they right. they got him a seat this year. It did say in the article that there was four seats. And they cut them, and so basically he was um, without a seat, and then he moved over to Formula E, so there was no room for him in the lineup at the time. Right. But they're getting rid of Ed Jones, so Rosenquist is in. Yes, I think uh, they'll need some some real quality to come in at Mahindra to replace him. But mm. um, who do you mm. think? Who who would you like to see in the seat to replace Felix Maximilian uh, Gunther? I I think uh, yeah you've you've hit that right on the nail on the head there Dean <laughs> you know exactly who I want to see uh, behind the wheel of the second Mahindra car. I might even do like a audio clip of this and then send it to Maximilian Gunther just you know <laughs> just ch- chuck it on the chuck it on the twitters and see if we get something. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, and pre-season testing for Formula E also. Yeah, so um, bit of a bit of a chance to actually see some some Gen Two cars racing, or racing testing, all on the track at the same time. Yes, and open to the media, and it's free as well. I think there are some free sessions, so that's really cool. Yeah, so when are we when are we looking at that? That's over in uh, Valencia in Spain, October sixteenth, nineteenth. Yep. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we won't be going over there to cover it, um, but, but I'm sure we'll see photos and news. Hey, if you want to sponsor us, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia. This will be interesting to see. It's kind of a shakedown, um, and it will have all of the cars on track together. Mm. So, really, this is kind of a, a bit of a shakedown before the cars head to Riyadh for December. Yeah, I'm. I'm really interested to see um, how these cars are, are going to turn out. You know, big changes coming into the Gen Two cars. Um, so, so yeah, can't wait to to see what happens. See all the action. Yeah, for sure. So last week we talked about this new segment. It is called Guess the Driver. 
So, Nath, I have one for you for us to start. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, am I allowed to Google along at home? Uh, no. If I hear any <laughs> tapping, then you're disqualified. Okay. okay. So our first guess the driver quiz. Here we go for five points. The driver started his Formula E career with Team Aguri. His date of birth is August 31st, 1991. And he won a race in Season 1 of Formula E. Hmm. So, I'm thinking young drivers who have been there the whole time. Um, Nelson Piquet Jr.? That is incorrect. Uh. For four points, the race he won in Season 1 is his only win in Formula E. His only win. So this obviously cuts out Nelson PK if I put that one <laughs> yeah. up there, because Nelson, I think, yeah. has won a couple more than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, only won one race. Oliver Turvey? That is incorrect. Ah. For three points, this one's got to give it away. Mm-hmm. He is Portuguese. And was born in Lisbon. Um, Portuguese drivers, Antonio Felix da Costa. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that is correct. That was, uh, that was an easy three-pointer, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, the two-point question was, he moved to Andretti for season three. And for one point, he was still at Andretti for season four and scored 20 points. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh well, I will. Uh, I'll get some questions together for you next next time, Dean. Yeah, I enjoyed that actually. It was quite yeah, cool. Yeah, it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, let us know how many points you got, and whether I was too harsh on Nathan for the first guess the driver quiz. And um, yeah, Nath, uh, be nice to me next time. <laughs> oh, there's so many names to choose from. There is a few. Yeah. I mean, feel free to use Antonio Felix da Costa again. Um, <laughs> Can I find another five pieces of trivia about him, though? Yeah, that's true. I mean... Uh, It'd get pretty obscure. It would get pretty obscure. Yeah. What's his favourite food? What's <laughs> his favourite colour? What's his mum's name? What's his mum's name? <laughs> yeah, I could probably look that up, though. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So that's it for this week. There's nothing else. Anything more from you, Nate? Uh, nothing more this week. Um, just, you know, lots of lots of news happening. I can't wait till we get back into some racing. I was really gutted also. This is for Formula One fans as well. Stoffel Van Dorn has just lost his seat at McLaren to Lando Norris. So I think we should start a petition to bring Stoffel to Formula E. And I think as well, that's that's a wonderful name, Stoffel Van Dorn. You're all about the names, aren't you? Maximilian oh, I'm all Gunther. about the Norns. You know, once we've got Gunther and, and Van Dorn going around the track, oh. Yeah, you'll just listen to it just for the names. It won't <laughs> be about the racing anymore. Alrighty. So, we love to talk with the community, and please send all your questions or show feedback to hello at regenracing.com. We can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, although we don't really post on there very often, and our website at regenracingpodcast.com. You can listen to us on Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Breaker, um, iTunes Podcast, everywhere you get your podcasts, we should be there. If you can take some time, share this show or review us um, on Apple Podcasts, Breaker or Podchaser, Um, that would be amazing. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Cheers for listening. Yeah.